for sure. Yeah, I mean, you could sure. really make a lot of room for some big time chalk if you were to fit in a Ted Ginn and a Tyler Lockett and get if you can get twelve and twelve out of those guys, you can fit some chalk players in there and it'll work out nicely for you. So, um, well, I, and, and this might this might be one ahead. of those two if you have the money to where you might want to start a lineup in identical and and rotate him and lock it out if you have the money because they both are keep your fingers crossed. But you you know they're not they're not just dream. Yeah, you have a pretty solid chance of producing. But one of those guys have a chance of doing nothing, and maybe both. You know. I've been so. saying it for weeks now. Ted Ginn is is a more established, more valuable receiver to that team than Kelvin Benjamin. Well, because he's not dropping the ball now. No, he did drop a big one though. If you saw, I don't know if you saw that last Monday night. He dropped up. I, I did. I didn't. But overall, I mean, there's been times where. He he's been much better, but he, so, yeah. takes, he takes the top off that defense where Kelvin Benjamin, six foot five, catches everything, but he, it takes an hour to get downfield. Yeah. Kelvin Benjamin, yeah. to me, is a very nice possession receiver, but just doesn't, doesn't do enough to make that defense freak out. Ted Ginn, not a great receiver, but his speed alone makes the defense freak out because they know that safety's got to keep the cap on. And if, if he gets behind somebody, Newton can throw the ball from his knee 70 yards. It's a, it's a, he's a dangerous player. I think Ted Ginn finds the end zone again. He actually really helped me out quite a bit on a Sunday Monday game that I, I think I should I think I won 120, what 125, 127, 50 or something on all those lineups this week because Ted Ginn nobody else had him. He was owned in a small portion of the league and he had 14 points and it was enough to bump me up. But um, that said, Adam Humphreys, hey, 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 possibly here's one I like even better that um, it's one of these dangerous picks where you don't like the offense at all mm-hmm. on a shitty team, so I'm breaking a cardinal rule of, of yours. But okay. how about Marquise Lee? Yeah, you know, that's a division game. There's a, he, he's the best receiver on that team. And Tennessee is the worst defense as far as giving up points to the wide receiver. The worst. The only thing I don't like about, about Marquise Lee is you're in the midst of a coaching change. Gus Bradley gone. I don't know that he was helping that team a whole lot anyway. But I think that oh – I just think Blake Bortles is terrible. I think was he a third overall pick? What a waste of a pick. It's almost – I don't want to say it, and I won't say it. But, yeah, just Russell – Bortles last year had all these big numbers, and now all of a sudden he, he forgot how to throw the football. So either he's got a serious case of the yips. I don't know what what the deal is. I just I, I can't. I just can't. I like to pick receivers with good quarterbacks. For example, Amari Cooper, Ted Ginn, Malcolm Mitchell. You got good quarterbacks throwing the ball. I, I just I can't mix a Marquise Lee in any of that. I'm taking a chance on one one no. one. <laughs> Riverboat Mike it, rolling the dice. You got to. Hey, I get it. I I completely get it. Yeah, no, I, I just like his price point, and I think they're going to be – I think Tennessee's going to open it up on them, so they're going to have to be throwing the ball around. Like I said, they're not going to win. I'm not saying that, but I think he's going to have 100 yards receiving again and possibly a touchdown. Very possible. He's a really yeah. athletic guy. He po- he popped a big kick last week, um, which was part of my demise in said fantasy football leagues. A couple of names I want to throw out there real quick that are on the lower end of the totem pole. Not afraid of Pierre Garçon at all. Not afraid of a Cameron Meredith at all. I think those guys have some really interesting lineups, uh, matchups. I think Dontrell Inman, again, there's a good chance he finds the end zone in another 70 yards against the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, I agree. That could be an issue up there, and, and I just don't like Phillip Rivers as a man. But I, it's a good possibility that you, Inman finds the end zone again. Yeah, I, couldn't, I can't argue with any of those. No, the, 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 I think that, you know, there's some things to jump up. The good thing is, is they're all, you know, in the, in the 65 to the 46 to 65 price range. It gives you room for points. It gives you room to find other players to move in there. I want to point out two more players that are on my mind, the wide receiver, and then we, um, boy, we, uh, we chatted it up here tonight, buddy. we got to move into tight ends quickly. Um, not this week, but keep an eye on DeAndre Hopkins. Looks to yeah. me like... Savage just throws a better ball, just makes a better decision, is just better than Brock Osweiler. And I, I saw the light come on with that team when, when Savage came into that game. They're sick and tired of playing for Brock Osweiler. 
Look for DeAndre Hopkins to find like 65 yards and a touchdown. He might be a little bit overpriced, so I would say this week stay away from him until we see what happens. He's got a tough matchup against the Bengals, too. He's at 6,600, but you, you, you could potentially see something special out of him this, uh, this week. Don't be surprised if he has two touchdowns, a little uh, making up for lost time. Yeah, you know he has it in him. And then maybe you, you do. I, Tom Savage, that's who I'd be throwing the ball to. If I was, I'd you know hang one up there. Don't be surprised if Will Fuller takes the top off the defense at one point or another, too. They're in Houston. Weather won't be an issue. Cincinnati just played their Super Bowl last week and lost to the Pittsburgh Steelers, were officially eliminated out of the playoffs. The more I talk about this, the more I think there's an opportunity. You almost have to put DeAndre Hopkins in a lineup just to see what you can get out of him. Uh, going forward, one more receiver I want to point out that I, I, I'm i telling you, this guy is, he's first of all, he's super talented. Second of all, he dropped two touchdowns last week, and I had him in all of my standard league lineups, and I've ridden his ass all year long, and he dropped two. Devontae Adams dropped two touchdowns in the end zone last week. Do you know that? I do now. Yeah. yeah. I was really disappointed in his line because I had a number where I started, you know, Jordy or him, and uh, I was disappointed. He finished last week. He had six targets, two catches, 25 yards, three and a half FanDuel fantasy points. Dude dropped two touchdowns on two separate drives. He's got nine touchdowns on the season. I don't. One of them hit him right in the hand and slipped. Well, both of them did. Slipped right through. You have, you have to catch both of them. If you're an NFL wide receiver. You got to catch them both. Um, completely and totally made me sick to my stomach because I. That's the league I lost. I could have sure used an additional. That was worth probably 17 points. One was from 30 yards out. Uh, yeah. Brutal. Brizzoodle, brother. So, that said, Devontae Adams has a little resurgence this week. Minnesota's defense is, is not what we thought it was. Uh, I think the word I'm looking for is shambles. I think they're probably just a little tired. Tired. They're carrying everything. People if Adrian, they had he's offense not worth making a shit. difference there. So, all those things said, man, let's, um, let's slide on to tight ends, and then we're going to have to speed through kickers and defense as quickly as possible. But tight ends, is this an easy one this week or a tough one? I think it's a tough one. Um, I, I felt it was uh, easy if for one choice and then tough as far as expecting big points out of them. Easy meaning uh, my easy chalk pick, I guess, is Greg Olson. I'm not – you know, really a he is fan. a little banked up, though. He is questionable. Okay. Um, well, if he plays, it's just the fact that Atlanta has given up uh, the fifth most points to the tight end. So I like the overall uh, ability for him to score. But, you know, he's just having a down year. So, And obviously I'm going to watch that uh, injury. It's an elbow injury, so he will likely be okay. But just the, the caveat is there. Yeah, again, I'm a little apprehensive because uh, the, the overall tight end position has been sorry this year. So I yeah. made it simple on myself, and, and I, I looked for, if I'm, you know, we, we've talked about some of the guys I like. So in a lot of them, I've been able to do, you know, T.Y. Hilton with Mike Evans, with Jordan Howard, with McCoy in a lineup together, you know, and still have one of our top three quarterbacks that we mentioned. Uh yeah. So I like Charles Clay, believe it or not. Yeah, you should. You should. He's the man. He's really coming on the last two games. You know, it's the next team of his, so you get that factor we always love trying to stick it to the guys that fired you. Um, and then just overall, the the he's got one of the better matchups at Miami's giving up the twelfth most points to the tight end yeah. position. So. Charles Clay last week, seven targets, seven catches, 72 yards, and a touchdown. He scored a touchdown in the last two weeks. He's had over 50 yards receiving the last two weeks, over five targets in the last two weeks. Um, exactly. So that that tells me that if I can get 50, 60 yards from the guy, maybe even 40, get four or five catches and a touchdown, then that might be the top end of the tight end production. For that might week. be the top end of top ends. Um, yes. Yeah, I mean, this week it's – it looks like we could have another week like last week. You, you know? really could. I don't mind Kobe Fleener this week. I know they really mixed the ball up, and he's a tough guy to lean on. Uh, just because they mix it up so much. I mean, last week he had three targets, two catches, 10 yards. He was non-existent. The week before that, six yards, non-existent. 
But the week before that, he had 86 yards, seven targets, five catches. I don't love him, and I don't say you have to plug him in anywhere, but I just see that he's one of those sneaky guys. That this is the week that he gets his 88 yards and a touchdown. Um, still wouldn't start him, but I think he's that guy that sticks out at me. I got another guy that sticks out at me that I did mention to you quietly last week, and uh, it was I didn't play him because we didn't play anything in that Saturday night game, but uh, Deion Sims. Oh, he went off. He's the guy that cost me because I played some – <laughs> yeah, four yards, four catches, uh, 31 yards, two touchdowns. It seemed like they were just uh, really tight end focused in that game plan against the Jets, which makes me wonder is does Martellus Bennett benefit the same way this week? He's off the injury report. He's at 5,600. Um, I don't know. Like I said, maybe if I'm stacking him in one lineup with uh, yeah. Um, Tom Brady. Tom. He hasn't had a monster week since October. Let me see where he's at. I'm trying to see what his injury is. He's at 5,600. He's got a note. Let's read it. He was limited in practice Wednesday. That's right. A little bit limited, a little hobble, just didn't whatever. But um, I would not be afraid, especially if you've got Brady in your lineup. He's got to throw it to somebody else. Bennett's going to get a score this week, too. Let's... Um, Let's wrap up tight ends as best we can in a neat, pretty little bow. Jordan Reed can't be on the field anymore. He couldn't even throw a block the other night. That guy's so hurt. So then Vernon Tyler Davis. Eifert, Tyler Eifert got no love against Pittsburgh last week. I don't know if they tried to get him back on board. Uh, yeah, that was awesome. That, that cost me. That cost me as well. There's another one of my players in that great lineup that laid an egg. Um, I'm done whining about it. But let's, let's slide along to kickers and defense because we are um, – we're behind. Man, kickers, I just went. It's pretty easy. I went with the cheap guys. Ryan suck up because uh, Jacksonville gives up the most points to kicker. So, sure. I mean, what more do you want from that? That's a perfect game. You could see him getting three field goals and two or three extra point attempts for sure. Yeah, good um, pick. You know. And then uh, just move right along. Like I said, I mean, I'll just sit my defense and then you can spit out your okay. kicker's defenses. Cause defense really, is easy, too. Defense is easy as shit, man. And this is where I'm going to do my carousel idea because I have the money for all of these. Okay. I like San Diego Chargers at Cleveland. Yeah, can't miss it. And then I also want to start Seattle and New England. And since Seattle and New England are both 5,000 and San Diego is only 49, I'm telling you, you want to definitely – especially if, if I think, and I do, I think all these defenses, you could see one of these defenses have 25 points. So I want to make sure I don't miss out on that. So if it's worth me spending $2 in a lineup, I'll spend 6 and make sure I cover it. Yeah, I think that New England is a must-start defense. I, I do. I really do. But yeah, that you can also see, so poor. But so is Seattle, yeah, and then so is San right. Diego. That's There's what I mean, right. like. I would rate New England as number one, and then Seattle and San Diego is like both neck and neck for two, two A and B. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I ain't scared. No, and I, well, I like the fact that they're only a hundred dollars apart too, and Seattle and New England being the same price. So you might as well, if you've got five bucks in on it, throw down fifteen and cover all your. Because I can't see no one else even comes close to the matchup on paper that says we're going to score huge points. Yeah, I would. Um, I tend to agree with everything that you just said in that regard. There. So, um, all that being said, my man, let's uh, let's quickly do if we can run down and quickly throw together a four o'clock lineup. Do you, do you got time for that? Can can I keep you on for ten more minutes? You can, man. I got a great lineup for uh, the four p.m. matchup. So. All right. Um, um, hey, on that note, fire away, man. Tell me what you got. Well, if we're just to, to go over the, the 4 p.m. games that uh, start at, uh, obviously, the 405, there are four games. It's Indy at Oakland, Tampa Bay at New Orleans, San Francisco at uh, Los Angeles, and mm-hmm. Arizona at Seattle. So that being said, uh, remember we were high on Drew Brees for a reason. We might as well keep, keep the love going. Um, also, there's Andrew Luck, still on the table. 
So I'm going with Drew Brees as my number one guy. 